What a great opening week in the Premier League that was. Let's move on to week two, another chance to win $50,000. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back on into another episode of Winning Bets. I'm your host, Jason Mattis. As always, thanks for coming along on this episode. This is one of the free contests that we play, and it's over on the NBC Sports Predictor app where we can win $50,000. You guys know how this goes. Is They give you five games. you got to correctly predict all five games with the result and the score, and if you can do that, you guys can win the $50,000 prize. If not, you can still win a guaranteed $1,000 prize for the people who get the most points. And additionally, you guys remember, I'm also giving away a chance to win some money. That's right, you can win $25 each and every single week, right? Me, how can you do that? All you gotta do is jump over to that league tab there on your phone, join the league here, and compete against your fellow winning bet supporters right there. And whoever has the most points within that league will go ahead and win $25. Who was the winner last week? It was Chipman. Chipman comes in with 28 points, so a nice performance there by him or her right there. Good score. And as you can see right there, a lot of close people right there behind them. If the chip man slipped up, it could have been your week. So this could be your week, maybe this possible week. So chip man, all you got to do is go ahead and hit me up on Twitter. Drop me your PayPal information, and I'll go ahead and send you that $25. And it's at Winning Bets Pod. It's at Winning Bets Pod right there. How did I do last week? Well, I got 12 points. I got three of the five games right. I was so close, though. So close for a much bigger score. I was near Chelsea. I had 2-0. That game went 3-0. And then Liverpool, I predicted 4-0. And that one was 3-0. So I was really, really close to nailing a couple correct scores. But opening weekend, we talked about how that weekend was going to be tough. So I'll take the 12 points. I'll take three out of five any day. And we'll move on to the next week. Well, fun fact, before we jump into today's games, no draws last week in match week one. That's right. Match week one saw 10 winners and 10 losers. No draws. Interesting fact right there for you guys. All right, let's go ahead now and jump on into these five games this week. The first one up we got is Brightford versus Watford there. Watford, they held on versus Villa last week. They jumped out to an early lead there, and they ended up holding on. It was 3-1. Score says it was 3-2, but they got a late penalty there in the 97th minute, so it was kind of like a 3-2 or a 3-1 game right there. So good showing by Watford. Come back on in the league, knock out Villa. That was a nice performance by them. Brighton also had a nice performance, though. They were at Turf Moor and secured a nice 2-1 win up against Burnley right there. A good, de tough defensive team. They got, you know, Tarkowski and me and Pope, really that spine of that team and that heart of that defense. So to be able to put two past them at Turf Moor, I thought that was a nice, nice performance there by Brighton. They got eight shots on target, 14 overall. So, yeah, just a really good performance by them. I think Brighton's going to be too much here. Look, Watford's a newbie to the Premier League. I think uh, Brighton's going to kind of show their prowess here of being a Premier League club. It's their home opener. Go ahead and give me the Brighton win, and I'll say it's by the score line of 3-1. to one. Let's move it on now to Wolves versus Tottenham right here. Look, Spurs are going to come in here full of confidence. A, they went ahead and knocked off Manchester City last week, beating them 1-0. And two, their manager, Nuno Santos, is the former manager of Wolves. So if anybody knows what this Wolves team is going to be throwing at them, maybe not tactically wise, because it'll only be worth one game of tape, but player wise, what is that player's strength? What is that player weakness? Nobody's going to know it better than Nuno Santos. So Spurs come in, yeah, with tons of confidence on the heels there of that nice 1-0 win over Spur or, uh, City. We're really just a nice, good game plan right there, shutting City out in that. So that was really nice by them. Wolves just couldn't score. You know, we couldn't score last year without Raul Jimenez. Coming back this season, already start off with a nice, uh, you know, goalless game right there, losing 1-0 to Leicester. But the more upsetting part is you may get, you may go uh, have goal or games where you don't get goals, but only three shots on target. That's all the Wolves could muster. I know Leicester's a good team and, you know, they'll be one of those, you know, top four, top six battles teams but you gotta be able to get more than three shots on target that was not good by them maybe the wolves are still finding themselves up under their new manager and haven't quite figured out the tactics and how to employ those tactics up against a good team again i know Leicester's a good team but you know so is the spurs team we don't know if harry kane's gonna play there's still that big transfer saga if there's any chance of him moving on to city you're not going to want to risk injury and lower his market value so big question mark with kane but i still think spurs can get it done they beat city they show that they're going to be another strong club again this season so go ahead and give me the Tottenham win and I'll say it's 2-0 they'll keep the clean sheet Nuno Santos will know how to stop this Wolves team so give me a 2-0 win for Spurs 
Let's move it over now here to Southampton versus Ham or, uh, Southampton versus Manchester United. Southampton, look, they lost 3-1 to Everton. They just looked really bad. Manchester United won 5-1 against Leeds, and they looked really good. I mean, they probably had the player of the uh, in the uh, player of the week last uh, last week, and Paul Pogba. I mean, that first assist, you guys see that? To Bruno Fernandez, just one time it flick it up over to him. He's in the box. Just a just a just a just a, just a, a unbelievable touch there by Paul Pogba. So um, yeah. You know, Manchester United should have no problem here. They actually played midweek against Burnley. It was just in a friendly, but Ole going to Solskjaer still working up, getting his players up into match fitness. So they arranged a friendly there against Burnley. They won that 3-1. So, yeah, they're, they're just going to have way too much in attack here for Southampton. It really comes down to, do you think Manchester United can keep a clean sheet? They've got Varane. He should probably play. I think he'll probably even start in this game. Sancho's going to go ahead and start more than likely in this game after playing midweek there against, you know, Burnley. So, I'm going to say that they do keep a clean sheet too much. Just just too good of a team, too good offensively. They've shored up the back end there with Varane. Go ahead and give me a Manchester United win, 3-0. Let's move it over now to Arsenal versus Chelsea. Look, Arsenal lost to Newbies Brentford last week, 2-0. I'm well aware they didn't have a Bung Yang. I'm well aware they didn't have Lacazette, but you, you got to do better than that. They, there are parts of that game. They just look terrible. I mean, Brentford, I know, on their home ground, newly promoted team. That place was rocking. I love that atmosphere. It was absolutely rocking. So great to have fans back. All the games really had just great, you know, you know, ground and fan support. But you know, that one in particular, because it was our first game there on Friday afternoon, was just really cool to, you know, to see that Brentford crowd get into that. But, you know, they make Arsenal look really bad through large chunks of that game. So, uh, meanwhile, Chelsea, they cruise, cruise right on past Palace. That game was played in Palace's half of the field. I mean, <laughs> they barely got into Chelsea's half of the game. That's how much they dominated them to a nice 3-0 win right there. Nice, beautiful goal there by Alonso on a free kick. Got their center back involved, scoring a goal. Yeah, Chelsea, we know that they're the real team. They're the complete team. And they're going to have Lukaku. Expect him to feature, if not start, in this game. He's been there now for training for a few days. So, like everything about Chelsea, don't get fooled by the name Arsenal. They've got the name of being a big club, but this is not a club that's going to be top four. I don't think they're going to be top six. I think they're going to be struggling. They'll be clinging to be in that top half. They're somewhere, you know, seven to ten, you know, was where they'll probably ultimately fall in that table. So, Chelsea will roll. Let's give Arsenal one goal. I do expect a Bung Yang and Lacazette do come back. They'll be uh, be able to feature in this game, or at least maybe even one of them. So maybe they'll nick a goal. Not going to be surprised if there's a clean sheet, but I will go ahead and say 2-1 to Chelsea. Then the last game is the Monday night game there. We've got uh, West Ham versus Leicester going on right now. West Ham had a nice win. 4-2 up over Newcastle. That was good. And as we just spoke about Leicester, when we talked about the Wolves, they were able to get by those Wolves 1-0. Uh, look, uh, West Ham won both of these reverse fixtures They by a scoreline of 6-2. I don't think, you know, on paper, I don't think there's a whole lot that separates these. But, boy, it does seem like West Ham's got more attack, right? But Leicester is probably better defensively. This one to me is really tough. You could see somebody winning this game. I do see goals. I mean, both of these teams are going to get on the score sheet just too much in, in their attacking with Antonio and Vardy, you know, leading those respective lines. So both of them will score. Not going to be surprised if there's going to be a winner, but I've got this one at a draw. Go ahead and give me a 2-2 draw. I just, I just see goals in this. Just, just too much, you know, good quality players on the pitch there. So I've got that one at 2-1 right there. All right, guys, that's how I'm going to do it for these five games. Don't forget, if you want a chance to win my money, win $25, join the league. The, video, the information to join that league is in this video description. And if you want a, a preview of all 10 of these games, go ahead and check out my live show. I'll get on live every Thursday afternoon at 12 p.m. Eastern time with my good friend Matt. He's also a handicapper. We break down all 10 games and provide you guys with real bets. So if you want any real bets, check that show out for a full preview of all 10 of these games and some real bets right there. Otherwise, guys, come back next week. See if anybody won that $50,000. See who's going to take my $25, and we'll preview match week three. Have a good one, guys, and good luck with your picks. That was a lot of fun. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and good luck with your picks. If you're interested in placing real sports bets, then check out my latest daily free sports betting video in the bottom right corner. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next contest.